Good morning and welcome to the original Loretta Brown Show. Woohoo! Radio to open the heart, heal the soul, and awaken the consciousness. Benny, it's sunny. I know. Woohoo! So happy, looking forward to it, and you're just as sunny as ever, which <laughs> makes it doubly magnificent. I feel excessively radiant today, but you know, uh, for those of you on YouTube, you can already see my lovely guest, Jonathan, whose radiance is just, oh, I feel like I'm bathing in it. And You're it glowing. So You're good. definitely glowing. You're definitely <laughs> glowing. Yes, yes. Um, I, I sometimes get this heartfelt connection with people and I, I'm really feeling it. And uh, thank you, uh, Jonathan, for being on the show. I'm going to yak a little bit and then I'll properly bring you in. But, you know, I just want people to gaze on his handsome radiance and just soak it in and just because it's energy right it's all about the energy and we certainly do need to raise our our energy level a little bit right now so i am the owner of reiki oasis located in the greater seattle area for 26 years i'm only 29 so i don't know how that happened but anyway um we have lots of good things going on as you all know i have not been in the office for a few months but i am doing lots of zoom uh, lots of Skype, lots of FaceTime, uh, lots of phone calls because I don't do just Reiki. I do all kinds of things um, to include uh, spiritual counseling and channeling and, and hypnosis. And we do a lot of emotional clearing work and, and all of that sort of stuff. I call it what's really going on behind the scenes of the energy. We get down deep inside it. Jonathan's nodding his head. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. And um, you know, we always do want to get underneath that. We want to go into the roots of things and kind of rewire the whole thing. So anyway, you can find out more about me, Loretta Brown, at ReikiOasis.com. You can schedule anything and everything at schedule.ReikiOasis.com. Thank you to my amazing webmaster, Indigo Hawk, for everything you do that I have no idea how you do it, but you do it so beautifully. Thank you. And uh, also a big shout out to my uh, listeners and my supporters we are a listener-supported show. As you all know, we're on live air uh, on uh, KKNW, and, and we're also live on YouTube, and airtime is not free. So um, if you want to be part of that uh, family, you go to patreon.com slash the Loretta Brown Show, and every dollar is much appreciated, much, much appreciated, and I always uh, send you blessings and Reiki and healing and everything, anybody that does that, your name is actually on my altar. So just in case you didn't know, that's how it works. And uh, also for all of the people that come see me for readings or Reiki or help or counseling or whatever it is, um, your names also are on my little altar. And I just do my little mm -hmm. prayers for people and send good things out and I hope it helps. Um, and every drop of ocean helps is the way I think of it. I've got some good stuff coming up this Saturday, the day after tomorrow, is the Temple of the Divine Feminine, which is my monthly class for women, and we are doing it through Zoom, and it has worked really, really well, and this is a massive energetic weekend. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of work. We're going to be doing some circle work, you know, and some... Um, setting of intentions, some healing work, and I really just, if you want to join, it's an uplifting time. Um, sometimes we cry together. I mean, it's it's a bunch of women. <laughs> you know, we're going to share our hearts, and we're going to put our arms around each other virtually, and um, I just really invite you to come. It is four hours. It is from 11.30 to 3.30 on Saturday and the time goes by really fast. So sign up for that at schedule.reikioasis.com. And if you have questions, um, feel free to just shoot me a little e email. You can send it to reikioasis at gmail.com. Or you can even text me at 425-985-9513. I don't always put out my number, but it is public. And you can text me uh, about that workshop. Please don't text me a whole bunch of other stuff because... I, I just don't have bandwidth for it, sorry. And then I will also be back in the office starting July 1st. There will be a lot of, um, there's a lot of regulations and requirements. And if you want to find out about that, just sign up for my newsletter at ReikiOasis.com. Uh, and of course, if you have an appointment, I'll just send it all out to you. Basically, you have to wear a face mask and 
you know, I have to take your temperature and you have to answer some questions, things like that. So we will be back up and running and I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody. I will also still be offering uh, virtual sessions for those people that have just <laughs> discovered they love them so much because they don't have to fight Seattle traffic or um, you just would rather not come out just yet. You know, I've, I do have some high risk clients out there. So take care of yourself, everybody. Um, it, like I said, a lot going on. Let me go through astrology really quickly because this week has been intense. I think everyone's feeling it. And I, I feel like the sky is on fire. It's just on fire. Our innards are on fire. We're in the middle of that fire of transformation and we're going through it. We are so going through it. So Wednesday, which was yesterday, we're, we're airing this show on, on Thursday, um, June 18th, but yesterday Mercury went retrograde and don't get scared. It joined four other planets uh, in retrograde and we're eventually going to have six planets retrograde. So the retrograde planets just bring in the, the RE part of everything, like rethink, reconsider, reassess reform renew go back and view it again and it gives you the opportunity to kind of straighten it out if it wasn't straight in the first place so don't get scared about um uh retrogrades they're really an opportunity to heal and like i say you know when we decide to do something differently we change our future we literally change the trajectory of our life and boy isn't that what we want to do I also just want to say this, um, this is the time to let information in, absorb it, reconsider, but don't overdo the news. I really recommend you get off the news and go do something beautiful, um, sing, laugh, play, you know, do some sort of energy thing, light a candle, put your hands or your feet in the earth, roll around, you know, look at the blue sky or the stars. Look into the eyes of your loved ones and tell them that you love them. And, and let's lift ourselves up a little bit. There is a battle going on right now for the soul of our country and possibly for our planet. And we, we need a lot of social reforms. And so we can contribute to that. But we always want to be focusing on what we're creating, not at what is, is destructing or de dying. You know, this is always a cycle of life. We do have the ongoing Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter conjunction, this great big huge thing in the sky, and it is transforming the fabric of our culture. And um, as the astrologer Rick Levine, who is here in the greater Seattle area, reminds us that the current protest movement has historical resonance with the Protestant Reformation, which was sparked in 1517, that's 1517, at the beginning of a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, the same sort of fire in the sky. And that was, you know, when you look at that, like the Protestant Revolution, the Reformation, um, really changed a whole lot of things. So just kind of be with the fact that, yeah, things are changing and there will be a before and an after and we're right in the middle of it. Um, I recommend that you take advantage of the lighthearted energy tomorrow, which is Friday, because we're going to have a very intense Saturday and Sunday. So uh, Friday, <laughs> laugh and dance around a little bit. Um, it's a good emotional healing day because Saturday we have a powerful day with the summer solstice. The sun will be moving into Cancer. The moon also moves into Cancer. And it's a new moon with a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse is where the moon comes between the earth and the sun. And at its peak, this the moon will be covering the sun by 99.4% of itself. Now, we will not see that straight here because we're, we're off to the tip of it. Uh, but it will be in northern India along through there. You can look that stuff up on the internet if you want to see exactly where you're going to have the best view. Obviously, you're not going to be flying to North India right now if you're here in the Seattle area, but you could always watch it, hey, virtually, so I'm sure somebody will take pictures of it. But it is actually called the Ring of Fire because when that moon comes over the sun, you've got all the fiery sun coming around the edge, and it's just 
to me is just sort of breathtaking. This ring of fire is also when the sun's face is hidden like this, right? And that new moon comes. This is a time of great introspection and the time of really setting the intention of where do you want your life to go and where do you want the life of our planet to go? So, whew, that's a lot of intro. That's a lot of stuff. I can't wait. I'm going to bring Jonathan in now. It's just a wonderful, wonderful, perfect day for you to be here just as we're entering into the, the, the part of the ring of fire, Jonathan, the ring of fire. My guest is Jonathan Hammond, and he is an energy healer, a shamanic practitioner, a spiritual counselor, a shamanic Yasui and Karuna Reiki master teacher, an award-winning Broadway and TV actor, a Harvard advanced degree holder, and he has certificates in the Cherokee bodywork, Huna, and Ho'oponopono. He's the author of The Shaman's Mind, Huna Wisdom to Change Your Life. And you know, Jonathan, you are just the quintessential renaissance man welcome to the show <laughs> aloha it's really wonderful to be here it's also oh. great to be to be with a, a, a healer uh, I, i'm not used to being interviewed by by another healer so that's really wonderful too isn't that just so fun so yeah aloha and aloha and i just you know i look at your book by the way i want to show people the the cover of your book i have a print out of it. it's just a lovely lovely color uh cover I love it. All of the earth, right? You know, but the shaman's mind, the shaman's mind. How did you go from, <laughs> uh, how did you get here? How'd you go from being a Broadway actor to a shaman and a teacher? And how'd you tell us a little bit about yourself? And I know that's a big question. Well, I started, um, uh, I started, I did my first play when I was four. And um, I was always, you know, play acting and, and imitating uh, people. And, and, and my, I think my parents thought, uh, thought actor because, but I now know that I was just channeling, you know, with, with acting, you, you know, you learn the lines, you learn the blocking, and then you hope for inspiration to come through. And, um, and I'm essentially doing the same thing now. It's just, it's just different. And uh, I had always had a, a spiritual life. Uh, a, a very rich spiritual life, even while I was uh, while I was an actor, and it just felt like uh, there was a sense that I needed I was needed elsewhere, and and that my uh, my whatever gifts or talents or uh, propensities I have were just that the planet was needing me to let go of uh, something that I felt like I had worked through and move into um, the healing work. So that that's the short version. Um. I really love what you're saying. One of the things that I'm hearing a lot from uh, people and clients right now is like, you know, since they've been, you know, their, their whole life has been sort of turned upside down that they're feeling something tugging on them or they're, they're in their hearts. They're like, Loretta, I don't think I'm doing what I came to planet earth to do. Right. And I just heard you say that you went through some sort of a, metamorphosis or some sort of an awakening there or like you say maybe maybe the maybe you were just done with that part of your life right yeah and and it's it, it's really okay to have an identity crisis and and so many people are afraid to follow uh what what their body and what their soul uh it is is suggesting that they go in in a certain direction that may be counterintuitive it may be something that's confusing to family to, to friends, to uh, um, even to who their current Facebook friends are, you know, that, all of that. And, uh, and to, to allow yourself to feel the discomfort of that, but move in that direction anyway, knowing that if you're moving in the direction of spirit, that spirit has you, the earth has you, and we're connected to the earth. So if we're feeling drawn in a certain direction, that is earth wisdom moving through our body, moving through our the very fabric of our being. And if we listen to it, the earth and spirit always meet us halfway. Earth wisdom. I like that idea. Earth wisdom. Tell me a little bit more. What is earth wisdom? We are we are all earth being. We are connected to nature. So in shamanism, we we revere nature. And the reason why we re revere nature is because we want to emulate it because nature teach it, nature is in a constant expression of growth and creation. 
If you leave a forest alone to do its thing, it will just continually grow and create. Nature is aware of its interconnection with everything. Nature never says no to itself. It never denies itself what, what, what would be good for it. And so to emulate nature, which is what we do on the shamanic path, is to step into that interconnection and step into a sense of that we are always growing and creating. And, we are, and, and to be in flow with the earth, to, to connect with the earth wisdom is to connect with that growth and creation that is spontaneously happening through all of us. We just may have conditioning, wounding, uh, so, sociological limitations that, that tell us not to follow it. But if we can let that go, we have our, our bodies, our instruments to feel what is, to feel ourselves move into flow. And it's the same flow that, that nature is in a constant expression of. Wow, I love what you're saying. Um, I've got so many questions. I'm trying to figure out how to organize them. I, I really mean this. Um, what you're what you're talking about to me is so deep and really in the essence of of my understanding of how old it is. Like like we're not just in you know our own little island in the middle of nowhere. We're connected to all that is, right? Mm -hmm. So the, se the second principle of Huna uh, um, is called Kala, and it means there are no limits, which means that it is a limitless universe. Separation is merely a useful illusion, but it is not the nature of reality. We are, there's only one big thing happening, and we are all individual apertures through which we can experience that one thing, but we're not separate. And if everyone could, could understand that uh, and take their place in that, you would know more how to be because how what you what you heal in yourself you heal in the collective my hawaiian teacher says uh, if you want to heal someone think of them and you feel good <laughs> oh i like that yeah yeah that is that deep deep connection um you know we currently have almost 8 billion people on planet earth 7.8 you know, billion, we're close. I probably have babies right now while I'm talking. <laughs> and, um, you know, we because pe people ask me all the time, this kind of stuff all the time, like, okay, they're, all of us are on planet Earth right now going through this, this transformation, this rebirthing, this metamorphosis, whatever you want to call it. And, and so collectively, we're all here at the same time. But what I just heard you say, and I think it's so important, is that individually, uniquely you know in the idea that i am loretta and you are jonathan i i also came from my own unique piece of that whole so i am part of the whole and what i do for me like the very best thing i could do for me right now it's a question is work on my own healing mm -hmm. yes uh, we all we all play, if everyone just did their part so the, the first pr principle of Huna Ike says the world is what you think it is. So what that means is not just that your experience of the world is based on how you think, but that reality itself, that the world itself shifts and changes based on your very thoughts. So that means that individually, whatever is going on inside of us, uh, us in terms of our, our thoughts, beliefs, and intentions has an effect on the collective and the collective actually shifts and changes based on what is going on inside of us. That's why individually we each are so powerful in the co-creation of the planet. And so as much as, uh, as much as of course we're looking at the collective, it is about our individual contribution, which is just tending our own inner world and knowing that that inner world, whatever that is, that that is being projected out onto the canvas of reality and reality is shifting and changing based on it. We're so powerful. Well, it's so exciting what you're saying. Um, and it's it's kind of mind boggling. Um, yeah, I want to. <laughs> so inside and outside, it's that reflection of as within, so without, or, or that's, as that's, above, so below. That's, it, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. That, that's a, a very um, shamanic paradigm, that what, what is within is without. And so that's something that we're, we're always looking at. And if there are things in your life that you don't like, all you have to do is look at that there are thoughts, beliefs, intentions 
that in, are inside you that in some way have have brought those things about because the world is what we individually think it is. So how we how we experience and what we experience is based on what's going on inside of us. So if there's something that you don't like, you have the power. In in Huna, we say you taking 100% responsibility for what's going on inside of you because it is attracting what, what the your world. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So my lens, as I say, the lens I'm looking through, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, sometimes we call that the framework. It's like yep. that's based on every everything I've gone through. So may, maybe I was, you know, knocked around as a kid or or told I wasn't good enough or I was told that, you know, giraffes have short necks or whatever the deal it is. Right. Sure. And And then I took that and believed it as some kind of a truth and so then therefore you know please correct me because i'm i'm wading through this no we're we're, um, we're 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 all suffering from a case of mistaken identity because what happens as children is that when yeah. when there is neglect uh, abuse or even just uh, uh contracting against the pain of the world on some level the child takes everything personally and they form a sense of self based on the mistreatment based on the mistake and that 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 sense of self then gets lodged in there as as a, a truth and it's actually all based on a mistake we are all individually an expression of the divine and to see ourselves as anything other than that is to engage in in illusion but we're all in that and so, so, and that's why we need, that's why we need healers. That's why we need healing um, uh, in order to reclaim that and really address the, the, the child inside who, who is really suffering from a sense that there's something other than perfect and divine and innocent and loving. And, and part, of, part of the work that I do, and certainly uh, it's talked about a lot in the book is how to do that, how yeah. to actually go back and, and reframe that and look at that and sit your child right next to you and say, I'm going to take care of you in a way that they didn't. Yes, absolutely right. Um, yeah, I love, I love the work you're doing. Um, uh, the the uh, channeler, Paul Selix, uh, uh, talked on, on my show about label, I know Paul. labeling. Uh, tell him yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. And he talks about labeling and that how confining labeling is, you know, when we label things. And uh, you're 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 tapping right into the exact same thing because what I say, you know, I'm a sound healer, so you know what I say or or the way that I say it or the way I look at it, you know that that's the shift that we need to make in order to change our world. So we change our mind, we change our beliefs, we show up different. That's right. Be, yeah. Spirit, spirit, uh, the int spiritual intelligence is what, however you organize that, can only work with what we're creating inside of us. So, for instance, if you have a belief that all women over 35 are going to end up alone, and I've, and my time, you know, and if that's a belief and you've tended and harvested that belief, spirit can't sit the guy next to you on the subway because, <laughs> uh, you know, because essentially your, your, the limitations that you, you've created tell spirit. How, how what you're willing to receive and so and so spirit is just going to kind of wait until you change that enough so that you actually uh, so that it, it, it can actually do for you what you would want but it but and so our the, the limitations we create dictate to spirit how it can show up for us and this is a really important point because it, it because according to my tradition the Huna tradition this is saying that that spirit responds to us spirit follows our lead not the other way around. And that's, so, yeah. That's really important. Say that again. Spirit follows, we're not powerless nothings blown around by the, by, the, by the winds of creation. We are the causative source of what happens to us. You know, and when you said earlier about you know, take a break from the news, it's like, yes, because that's just one narrative. That's, the, that's one narrative. <laughs> And I know for me and all of my clients, COVID-19 has been this unbelievably growthful, uh, uh, beautiful, uh, uh, flowering time. And, we, and, and the, the, the magic of the virus, which is that we all have to go inside and we all have to get next to ourselves and mm -hmm. really see like what, when we're on the gerbil wheel of our, our life, you know, what are we missing? 
and to go inward and 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 look at that and everyone's having all of these uh, all of this waking up happening and, and and that's a whole different narrative and that's not the narrative that you'll see on television yeah the world is. is what you think it is yeah uh, i've i've actually been having the same experience as you where there's this massive growth even in my own self me too um, not being in my office and and working out of my home and and having to spend time with myself in that way, uh, I feel like I've grown years. Like I look back a couple of months and it seems like 10 or 20 years ago, you know, it's a long time ago. Well, you know, let me, mm -hmm. you know, these times, these times, mm -hmm. specifically this time on the planet has really been prophesied. It's been prophesied by, uh, by the Quechua people, the Native American traditions, the, 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 the uh, the rainbow prophecy is one, the uh, eagle condor prophecy is another, the, the Kali Yuga of the Hindu tradition. And as essentially what these prophecies talk about is that it's a difficult time on the planet. And during this difficult time, there is this army of light workers that are also incarnating at the same time in order to facilitate the change that, that the, di the difficulty is bringing up. And I would venture to say that anyone listening to this is, is part of that army. And so some, so some of us are having the experience of, of, of this quarantine being about fortifying something in ourselves. So when we can go outside, when the dust clears, and when that army of light workers can actually help to bring about the solution, we're well and able and clear with ourselves and clear with our, our purpose and our own inner courageousness in order to do that work. And it's, it, 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 there's a massive amount of people and even even the idea that esoteric wisdom is so readily available to us. The spiritual intelligences of the universe know what they're doing. It wasn't readily available 50 years ago. It is now. And that is that is all in service. That is all in service to this big change. Yay. I feel like I just want to cheer. Yay. <laughs> that's so right on. That that's absolutely right. And um, yeah, I agree with you. I think the people listening to this are, are part of this light workers, you know, that definitely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I think it's good to remember too, that sometimes some of us feel alone, like it depends on where we're living on planet earth, but sometimes we're like, wow, I, am I the only person that thinks this way? And I just want to encourage everybody. No, you're not the only one. And Hey, welcome to the family. And, and, you know, you can, you can also intentionally put your energy out there to join with, you know, like-minded people that are doing this great work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Uh, you know, COVID-19 comes from bats and bat medicine shamanically is the energy of death and rebirth. And so, and, 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 you know, we think of death as this scary thing at the end, which I've actually heard is kind of pleasant, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, but implied in death is rebirth. And this is what this time is. This is about deep change mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and people are resistant to change. You know, that as a healer, resistance and healing go hand in hand. They're two sides of the same coin mm -hmm. with the healing is always resistance. And so part of our work is to say, yes, feel the resistance, feel, feel your own fear around these changes, feel what you need to let go of. Uh, but we're going here now. And yeah. that's, that's all, that's our job to help yeah. people with that. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and take a station break. And um, this is Loretta Brown. You're listening to the original Loretta Brown show. My guest is the amazing Jonathan Hammond. And we're when we get come back, we're going to really go into the shaman's mind. We're going to talk more about Huna and especially uh, the the uh, parts of Huna. I want to I want to know everything. So we'll be right back. Don't go away. OK, I'll clear you too. Nice job. I'm loving this. Is that okay? I love it. Oh, good. Okay, good. It's no, so I, nice. It's so <laughs> nice talking to a healer and not just a radio host. It's like it's like a different thing. I can feel it, and I just literally, you were talking, and I was like, I have to cheat. I have to stand up and go, yes, yes. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no, it's totally my pleasure. So you've got some. Um, big big guides that work with you and you're doing a marvelous work this is just the beginning isn't it 
Yeah, this is yeah. this is my this is my first, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've been in private practice for a long time, but uh, but now it just feels like it's it's time to really pay it forward and and become more public in a way that's right for me, you know, um, uh, yeah. and in a way yeah, that I where that. where I remain close to myself, you know, not. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's an exciting time. Yeah, I like how you said that. Remain close to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I. Um... Yeah, I can really feel that because the need is great out there, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It's Absolutely. Just, it's messages to my own self, right? You know, messages to me or messages to you, which is, you know, serve them the message, not the messenger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 it's important to, to be clear about that for, you know, because, um, uh, in, in in stepping up publicly, particularly with my life as an actor, you know, it, it's like uh, um, those muscles are not they're not they're not needed in spiritual work. It's not really about me, you know, and that's um, it's it's really important. Well, and I also think that you know I, I truly be believe what you just said. You know, I've been on stage since I was three. You know, playing, oh really playing the piano, uh -huh. right? I'm a yeah. musician. Yeah. Let me know when um, you're ready, by the way. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah, I'm coming yeah. in. So yeah. All, right. All of that has helped me with what I do. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here we go. I love all that aloha and Hawaiian stuff. I, I have to admit to you, Jonathan, you know, my, my daughter, Jenny, aloha. I love you. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, every time I go to visit her, I don't want to come home. You know, there's something about it that just, you know, and then I'm like, no, no, you got to go back to Seattle, Loretta. That's what you got to do. I'm like, no, nah. right. <laughs> but there's something magical about the, the islands. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, in that part of the world, uh, there was, uh, there, this is true. There was an ancient con continent before uh, major uh, climate shifts called Mu. And we, we, we've heard the term Lemuria. Uh, which is something that not a Hawaiian would say, a non-Hawaiian would say it, but it was this this uh, this place of this kind of utopian place. Uh, the people were very spiritually gifted, very very connected. It, it's um, it's been theorized that that esoteric wisdom from all over the world uh, 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 conjoined at this place, and that that place, the Mu continent, lives uh, uh, historically underneath the Hawaiian islands. So there is. There really is this uh, th this sense that Hawaii is a vortex, and you can feel it. Everyone everyone feels that when they when they go there. There's a sense of of I have to engage my imagination just to comprehend this place. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, it's exactly right. And and of course, I've been up to Haleakala, you know, the the at the, uh, the sunrise, you know, mm -hmm. and then um, you may or may not know this, but. Um, I had um, Dr. Carmen Bolter on my show one time and she was talking about Egypt. She's an Egyptologist. Mm -hmm. She said that there's a direct connection between that Haleakala and the Great Pyramid of Giza. Mm -hmm. right, Haleakala was when I was on Haleakala when I got the message very clearly, change your life. It was, it was actually, uh, I had a, a visitation with something I write about in the book that was unexplainable, kind of like life review. And as I walked back up the the uh the volcano crater i said out loud i'm, I'm going to become a teacher and a healer and i'm going to let go of this other life so that happened in hawaii that's beautiful yeah. um i also am pointing out to the listening audience you're you're actually not hawaiian uh, no. <laughs> but you have this great connection to hawaii and i want to talk about uh huna and shamanism can you please tell me what is huna what is shamanism Sure. Well, um, Huna is uh, is a spiritual philosophy that uh, is uh, shamanic in its origin because it because it's so old, uh, and the, it's different than than traditional shaman shamanism only in that it really addresses the mind. It addresses thinking. In the the Hawaiians were on to the idea of our unconscious mind thousands and thousands of years before Freud and Jung. And, uh, and so, and they, they came up with a, a, a philosophy that is about how to think and about how to think about ourselves and to 
to get our uh, the, the different aspects of ourselves to all be working together, you know, which means that our conscious mind and our unconscious mind, our unconscious mind holds the wounding, holds that mistaken identity that we talked about earlier, and to uh, and get the conscious mind to address that mistaken identity so that we can align with spirit. And that is that is part of the, the philosophical construct of Huna. And uh, so it's, it's a shamanic psychology that, that goes back way before Western psychology. And then there are, there are principles, there are seven principles uh, in Huna that uh, uh, allow you, if you live by them and you understand them, allow you to enter into the magical visioning of the shaman. Uh, and, it, it, and so the reason why I named the book The Shaman's Mind is because it teaches you through those principles that if you follow those, first one, the world is what you think it is, the second, there are no limits, limit, it, that it's a limitless universe. The third, energy flows where attention goes, mm -hmm. meaning where you put your attention elicits the energy of the universe that, to create that thing. The fourth is love is the only ethic. Uh, the fifth is all the power comes from within. The sixth is the, the present moment is the only place where you can do anything. And the seventh is if it doesn't work, try something else. And so it's a, it's a very, and that's, that's how shamans think. That's, a, that's, it, that's obviously very, uh, a very truncated version of all of them, but it, it, allows, it allows the reader to really feel into all of those principles. And in that you enter into a life, a life where you are co-creating uh, with the universe all the time. I, uh, I love those seven principles and, and I'm letting the listening audience know that you really lay that out in the book. It was, um, I loved reading it. About, by the way, I loved your book. It's Thanks. it's uh, well written for anybody. It's an easy uh, it, it's an easy go to. You've got a, a lot of information, and uh, I do believe this that there's an energy that comes through it, right? You know, so that while you're reading, you're at, it's shifting you, and and these seven principles of Huna to me are like. I think everybody should have them. You should put together some kind of a card. We can stick it on our bathroom mirror and just look at them every day, right? You know, like the Reiki principles, like the seven principles of Huna and memorize them because even just going through that, like like you say, the, the first one is the world is what you think it is. You touched on that a little bit, mm -hmm. but that could be a really long dialogue, you know, yeah. just that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, it's 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 literally saying the world, the world, reality itself creates itself based on your thoughts. You know, it, it's uh, um, and so paying attention to what you're paying attention to becomes really important if that's the if that's the case. Well, and and then the third one, uh, energy flows where attention goes. That I feel like I I that's like I harp on that all the time. Yeah, you know, like like what are you attending to and are you doing it consciously or unconsciously like if you put intention along with your attention mm -hmm. right and also and also what 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 you're attending to unconsciously as well so if you have an unconscious belief that says i'm unlovable or my ears are funny that i that i that money is scary that on some level that's always that's always operative and that's why the things that aren't working for us we have to address because what whatever we're putting our attention on consciously or unconsciously is creating re reality and eliciting the energies of the universe to bring that reality into existence that's why it's so important to really look at all aspects of oneself well and and i just am kind of over generalizing here a little bit mm -hmm. but these seven principles to me are, are really loudly saying to us, you're not victims. And you alluded to that earlier uh, in the show that we are powerful. We have forgotten how powerful we are. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes in classes, people will say, well, does that mean I created my illness? Yes. You know? And those are, those, those are, and those are different difficult questions uh, um, to ask. Sometimes you have to defer to the great mystery Sometimes you um, you have to think of it as a lesson, you know, a lesson of the soul, you know, and that and, it, and from a shamanic perspective, it's through the darkness that light emerges. Even in in Hawaii, uh, uh, traditional Hawaii, the day started at nighttime, not at the daytime. So it's in the darkness that the light comes through. 
So, so it's not that you created your, your illness because that's a terrible thing to say. And, and, but it, it, and it doesn't mean that you've necessarily done anything on purpose, but the more that we can be aware that we do have our fingerprints on everything that, that we experience, the more we can uh, address what, what's going on inside of us. You know, that's a really great point. And it's actually one of the questions I'd written down because I have people come to me and they say that all the time. They'll go, what did I do that I that I have this illness? Or I must have really done something terrible to draw this to myself. Mm -hmm. right? And no, and it's not that. It, it, and and mm -hmm. what's, com what's counterintuitive here is that with illness, with difficulty, particularly chronic difficulty, there's always a benefit. And I put benefit in quotes, but there's always a benefit. Even, even if sick is, I'm not taking care of myself and my body goes, you're not solving the problem of taking care of yourself. So if I make you sick, someone's gonna have to. And, and that's simplistic. But if you start to think of, of your problems like that, then there's a sense of, I don't want my unconscious body mind to take over. I'd rather address what I need to address so that, uh, so that I don't need illness as a lesson. Does that tie into the three selves of Huna? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so the uh, um, so the three selves very simply the the conscious mind that's the one that's talking that that got you on the call today and all of that <laughs> uh, the the unconscious body mind. So what the unconscious body mind that's called the coup, uh, at least in my tradition, and that is uh, that is the part of us that holds the imprints, the memories. And so, so whatever, yeah. whatever we learned ourselves mm -hmm. and what we ever, whatever we learned life to be and the world to be, that's held in the unconscious mind and it's held in the body. So it, it, very simplistically, if the child learns they're not to speak or that speaking will get them into trouble, we will constrict on that part of the body. And you know this as a Reiki person. If the child learns they're not to feel their feelings, they will constrict on their lower belly to keep them from, from feeling the full spectrum of their feelings. And so those memories, those imprints are, are in the unconscious mind, which is held in the body. Uh, and so, so the conscious mind in Huna addresses the unconscious mind. So it's like the mind working with the body and saying, come home. You don't have to do that anymore. Let go of this constriction. Let go of this low self-esteem. Let go of this fear about money. That's not, I'm in charge now, not the people who taught you that. And then the third aspect is the higher self, which essentially responds to whatever we do down here, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. And the higher self simply holds our greatest potential. And it's always just sort of whispering in our ear, go, 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 potential, potential. When you feel inspiration, you're in your higher self. When you appreciate beauty, you're in your higher self. And it's a loving being, almost like a, like a guardian angel. And it responds to what we're, what we're creating down here with our conscious mind and, and, and what's held in our unconscious mind. And then whatever that is, that's what it has to work with. So those are, those are the three aspects of self. And of course, I go into them much more detail in the book. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, you, you, you go into it beautifully in the book. You explain it really, really well. And um, I, I think it's really important for people to get this idea of the three selves mm -hmm. and how they are working together or, or not working together. And, um, you know, it's, it's really about the mind, body, spirit, you know, that connection. But especially... Um, the communication between those aspects. That's right. It's so important. You know, when I'm working with clients, I'm never just talking to them. You know, that you know, there there is a child in there, there's a teenager in there that learned what they learned about life, you know. Then there's the adult that comes to the session and wants to get better. And then there is a, a spiritual self, an oversoul, so to speak, that is uh, that is also guiding them. And to align all of those, and it's 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 actually very simple. It's you you feel it in your body when you move in a direction that feels good and growthful and right. You feel it in your body. You feel the in, the inspiration of that when you do something antithetical to your best interest. You feel the agitating feelings that emerge. So if we just follow that, and the easiest way to do that is to remember that it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because that's what takes us away from that. Now, wait that, a minute, Jonathan. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter, you know, in the, you know, in this Instagram culture and everyone, everyone is so concerned about what everyone thinks. And, and the, the, it's a sociological construct that it's not how life feels, it's how it looks. And that is crazy. 
Yeah. That is crazy. And that keeps everyone away from themselves and keeps them in a version of themselves that they saw on television. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Rather than their inner truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And we're always looking outside ourselves for something that will say, oh, I need to be this way or I need to show up like this or these people need me to be this way. And and like you say, I think we really have lost track of who am I? What do I want? And and you know what? It's really OK to be me. And in fact, it's the most wonderful thing ever to be me. Right. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you said a lot. That's a lot. Everyone, everyone really struggles with that. And the more, yeah. you know, and, and it, it's so often with clients, I'll say, you know what, you're a little weird. And they, there's a relief. Oh my God, I'm a little weird. I don't have to be like, you know, particularly if you're called spiritually, if you're on the spiritual path, we're, we are revering invisible forces. It's a little weird, but we know that they're there. Yeah. And so you you know, and so the if any if anything has authority over you, let that have authority over you. But not someone else with their own wounding and their own uh, um, compartmentalization and uh, and their own uh, not taking responsibility. They don't get a say. It's yeah. from, it's what's inside you. It's what's inside you. And if, and if we would let it be, we have everything that we need. The six tuna principle is mana, which means all power comes from within. All power comes from within, which means that anything outside of us that in that has power over us only has power over us because the power inside us granted it the authority to have power over us. Uh, I just love what you just said. Um, yeah, years and years ago, when I had a, a massive calling to what I'm doing now, right? I had this meditation where. My, my main spirit guide showed up in no uncertain terms, just to make sure I got it. And, and one of the first things that he said to me was, remember humility and remember where the power really comes from. Mm -hmm. And you just activated that in me. Thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk about Ho'oponopono? So many people talk about Ho'oponopono, and I just love your, your take on it. Yeah, Ho'oponopono. So um, ho, let me just give you, break down the word a little bit. Ho'o means to make, or it's causative. Pono means rightness or true condition of nature. But the word is doubled, pono pono. So it means to make right more right. And so, so it is a practice through which we address the things in us that are anything less than our own divinity. Low self-esteem, illness, addiction, uh, 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 misbeliefs, limiting beliefs, uh, 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 a fractured sense of self. And we extend all held in the unconscious mind and we extend in Ho'oponopono, we extend loving attention to those parts of ourself. And in the face of receiving loving attention, these parts of ourself that, that were born of unlove, all of a sudden they can't hold, they don't make sense in the face of being loved. And so they begin to shift. And as we do that, it invites in the infinite love to, to, because we are then congruent with the love. We are in sympathetic vibration with the infinite love, with the divine love, because of the love that we're extending to ourselves. And we move into alignment with those three selves and, that's, and, and we heal. And so that's, that's essentially uh, Ho'oponopono. There, there are four phrases that are, are uh, typically used. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. And I go into them in great detail in the book. And you're saying to these hurt parts, I love you. I'm so sorry that you feel that way about yourself. Please forgive me for all the ways in which I have not tended to this and allowed you to feel that way about yourself. I haven't been a good parent and thank you for letting this go now and thank you for letting me thank you for taking the lead there's literally another part of us that's hurt that we can actually heal with our attention the purest form of love is attention and when you put attention on these things they begin to let go they begin to reformulate and and we we shift our sense of self and in shifting our sense of self we then have different thoughts and beliefs which co-create our world etc cetera, etc cetera. 
how, how do you recommend that someone approach Ho'oponopono? Because, you know, there's a lot of little clippy YouTubes out there that are like, do it this way, do it that way. And I've even ran across YouTubes where they've got the words in the wrong order or something, right? Yeah, well, well, well um, so Ho'oponopono is, um, the, the version that I teach is not a universal version because there isn't a universal version. And, and um, you know, Hawaiian would say Ho'oponopono the yard, which means clean up the yard, make the yard run, <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know. Uh, and, and traditionally, <laughs> traditionally, uh, I got a whole pot of pot on my house today. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, but traditionally it was a family practice. It was, it was something that was done in a group setting and, and, but, but contemporary Ho'opono, Ho'oponopono, which comes from, um, uh, basically from, uh, a, a, a couple Hawaiian teachers, um, uh, is about working individually with the self. And the, the, the order that I use, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, that's the one that works best for my clients, but that's not necessarily right. And one of the things that I talk about in the book is that here's the framework, here's what these phrases tend to mean for me, see if they work for you, and, and, and just where to direct them and how to direct them. Yeah. Uh, but there are all kinds of different versions of it, and I'm in no way a, 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 an authority about the one way. There, there, there really isn't one. I just really recommend people get your book and also read through that. And I highly recommend Ho'oponopono as a practice. It, it really changed my life a few years back. And I, I go back to it all the time. I'm showing people the cover of your book again, The Shaman's Mind. My guest is Jonathan Hammond. And it's just a, a, a lovely book. It's really, really good. What do you hope people will take away from your, this book? That, that they have so much say in their lives that, that they that they are um, that they are God in disguise that they and the level of forgetfulness of that you know knows no bounds but it is just forgetfulness mm -hmm. uh, that uh, to extend love to yourself is to elicit the love of the divine so when you see those memes on Facebook that say, did you remember to love yourself today? That's not something cute. That's something that if you actually did it, would actually put you in alignment with the spiritual intelligences of the universe. And, and we, we all have the choice because we all have a conscious mind, which is about choice. We all have the choice to do that. And we also all have an imagination which is also the conscious mind's domain that can imagine any reality for ourselves that we want. And we, we have that within us. And if for some reason, any of those freedoms are diminished in you, do the healing for yourself and the world so that you can step into that. And then when you do, you're going to want to teach other people to do it. And then we're on to something. That's how it spreads. That's right. <laughs> We'll spread it through the world. Yeah. Um, can you uh, talk a little bit about your practice in New York City? And yeah, um, uh, my practice, it, it's, it's, it's actually not just New York City, because since COVID-19, it's more ah, virtual than anything okay, else. But, thank you. Uh, but that said, uh, uh, I, I think of it, my practice has a spirit. And I think, and I think all practices, um, spiritual practices, um, have a kind of spirit. And mine is, I want to heal the earth, and I do that by, uh, you know, you, you can't think about plastic in the ocean if you got a tack in your foot. You got to remove the tack in your foot, you know. And so my, how I think of it is that I'm helping people remove the tack in their foot so that they can go worry about the plastic in the ocean. Because what happens is when you, when, when you heal, when you come to the other side of any healing, immediately, and you know this in your own healing, healing journey, you want to pay it forward. You want, you, you want to tell other people about it. That's why the best healers are the wounded ones. Because they, they <laughs> you know, right? That's what, that's what Carl Jung said, the wounded healer. You know, and the best healers are, are the wounded ones because they've been, they've been through it and they know, they know what it is to get the other side of it. And there is an excitement and a calling and a stepping into purpose when you can help other people do that. And so when we're full, when we're well, when we have love in our life, when we have enough money in our bank account, all of those things, the, the altruistic impulse is then to pay that forward. And so it keeps us in right relation. We receive and we give, we receive and we give. And that's what that that's to be in right relationship with the earth. That is shamanism. 
We receive from the earth, we give back to replenish her. I, I love that. Can you uh, tell us where to find you, where to find your book? And then can you just tell me what is Aloha? Yes. So uh, you can find me at jonathanhammond.com. Uh, and my book is available on Amazon, The Shaman's Mind, Huna Wisdom to Change Your Life. Uh, Aloha. 30 uh, seconds. Yeah, the Aloha. It, uh, ha is life force. Alo, uh, alo means to share. To share life force with another is to love. Oh, I love it. Aloha. Aloha to you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. It's such a delight to meet you and have you on the show. Thank you. Please go and, and shine your radiant light out there. And to all my listeners, please, please have a wonderful weekend. Uh, enjoy the ring of fire, but don't get pulled into it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you next time. This is Loretta Brown, my guest today, Jonathan Hammond. One last pick of your book, The Shaman's Mind, and really go get it. It's great. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Perfect. Man, you crushed it. Woohoo! Thank you. you. Crushed it. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. That was so fun. Thank you so much. Here's a hug. Oh, uh, <laughs> hug to you.